getting the picture? Yeah. We wanted my machine gun team and myself, the four of us, to run across this ice paddy, and they were going to give us some cover fire to get to a certain point way down there so we could put a field of fire in front of us, a big field of fire, to try to get them across. So they could go, yeah. And I didn't go for it. Uh -huh. So I said to the captain, I said, sir, I'm not doing that. <laughs> he said, I can have you shot. I said, oh, you can't. War is something that is higher energy. War is beyond us. War is beyond beyond my understanding. And so with that, I'm hoping to um, tell this Vietnam War story. I'm Eamon Foley. I'm a senior in the anthropology department, class of 2015. I'm getting a certificate in theater and I'm from New Canaan, Connecticut originally. Okay, so it all started with dance originally. I, you know, it's the classic story. I saw The Nutcracker when I was six years old and was just so enamored. And I was like, I want to be the prince, mom. I want to be the prince. And like, she was like, oh, okay, soccer and baseball and uh, all right, but okay. You know, it was, it was just kind of a scary prospect. After begging and begging and begging, I finally got into dance class. I fell in love with it immediately. So it started off with Gypsy when I was nine. And then when I was 10, as Gypsy was closing, I went into Assassins, which was another Stephen Sondheim show. And then I went on to do two productions of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Then after that, I did 13. And then my last show was Everyday Rapture, which was amazing. In my time at the anthropology department, I spent a lot of time studying ethnography and um, the idea of gathering information through interview. And it kind of reminded me of Laramie Project and all this great theater that's been created from ethnography. And I, was, I thought this would be a great, a great way to um, look at where anthropology and theater meet. Over the summer, I, um, I put out some Craigslist ads. I talked to some family members who um, knew some Vietnam War vets. I talked to my agent who was related to a Vietnam War vet. I talked to my dad who's working with one. And um, I was able to uh, just have lunches with them and just uh, meet them over the city and just talk about their experience in the war. And it was incredible. I'm trying to work through these and find um, actual lines, actual, um, actual words that these, um, these amazing vets said to me that uh, can both you know, inform the piece and could actually be monologue, that could actually come out and just be straight up ex like put into the show. So right now, I, um, I don't have a script, I don't have choreo, I don't have a cast, but I have a lot of great ideas you know, <laughs> bouncing around my head, and I'm really excited to start, um, to start you know, fine-tuning them and turning them into physical products. So what's really hard for me right now is getting words on the page. But um, yeah, I was, I was on this roll before. I, was, I just felt like just things were coming out of me and it was awesome. And um, I was putting a lot of you know, time into the script and you know, taking a seven day break because you have to you know, write two anthropology essays and you have to work on this other you know, anthropology thesis is, um, I don't know, it really kills the flow. So I'm trying to get back on that. Did you guys ever see in my history that I like wanted to be a director or a, cho or a choreographer? Yes, I did. I remember when I was studying for the SATs, back when I was probably 16 or 14, um, you were studying and you were tap dancing down the hallway. I was so angry. <laughs> I remember when you were taking dance classes that you turned to me at, I think, age seven and said, I wish I had more dancers in this class and that they were better dancers so they could do what I have in my mind. And, you, and that was seven years old, so you had been one to choreograph for a, a long, long time. It didn't come off my hand. My greatest fear would be that I couldn't live up to the ideas in my head that um, this big visual feast I'm trying to create, this big intense production, would not reach that intensity that I, I'm holding it to right now. This audition experience was so hectic and incredible. I was, it was really stressful because I wasn't sure if I was gonna get the cast I wanted. On the first day, I, I split into 
into three days and a callback. So, I mean, I am directing and uh, choreographing this little ditty. And I'm when the men showed up, I only got five guys. Only five boys showed up, and they were all incredible. I cast all of them. They're all dear friends of mine. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. Now, on that fall, that was like a dip. And then the next day like were the girls. And, oh my god, the girl, the female dancers on this campus are amazing. And we had 16 girls show up, which is kind of bittersweet. It's great that I have, an I have the cream of the crop to choose from already. But it also means I'm going to be cutting a lot of friends. I cut a lot of friends. I have to send out no's. I'm waiting for confirmation um, for all my yeses, but then I'm going to have to send out some no's, which is going to be sad. So I cast Alex Patel as Claude, who is this kind of lost boy character who's thrown into the war, who's drafted. And, um, and he kind of finds this love for it there. He's kind of a, like a lacking passion, but then in this highly intense place finds this manhood in him that is exciting and scary, this animal that he's, um, that this, there's that addictive quality of war that he really falls into. And he, um, and in, also in this strange, highly intense place, he um, develops a relationship with Tony, who um, I cast Colby Highland in the role. And uh, Tony is this kind of poet soul, a uh, beautiful guy who's kind of removed himself from the raw, raw nature of the Marines. He um, hasn't quite given into it because I think he's always felt like an outsider. He's a, a closeted homosexual. And, um, but however, they're on a mission together and, um, and in that world, he's able to experiment with that side of himself. This is a high stakes situation. He mutilated her. We're supposed to be protecting these people. We don't even see them as people. But at home, he has this girlfriend, this incredibly passionate um, hippie queen, um, organizer, um, public speaker, Sheila. I've cast Canberra Hart to play the role, and she's so wonderful because she also she has aerial experience um, more than I do. She's incredible on the silks. So I'm really excited to see her play the Red Angel and come down on those giant red silks and just rock that role. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is just a, a work in progress in the script. This is, um, I think, the third draft of the script so far. This is the first time I'm actually hearing it out loud with actors. So again, I'm very excited to learn something from this. Um, Today I'm doing the first reading of the script. And I have a bunch of actor friends coming in. And uh, this is the first time I'm going to hear it out loud. So I'm honestly really nervous to hear these words because, you know, I'm the biggest critic of my own work because you hear like the minor flaws in your lines and the little extra tidbits that, you know, can bring a little monologue down or bring a line down and you just hate it so much rather than just kind of being able to bounce over it and move on. So I'm, I'm nervous about just kind of cringing for the next two hours of this reading, but also very, very excited to hear it for the first time and learn about the next direction for where the show has to go. What's going on? I've waited for this day my whole life, son. The day you become a man. We love you so much, honey. You're going to make us so proud. So altogether, it's a huge cast for a show at this school. It's 23 people, which is a lot of people who are already very, very busy. And, um, and they're, and they're going to be giving me a lot of their time, which is you know, both awesome and generous. And I'm very excited about it, but a little scary, because I know it's going to be a lot of conflicts and I'm going to be have to, having to work around. Especially that tech week when I need all 23 people in a room and all 23 people already have their own schedules. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a challenge. <laughs> I don't know. I, like, is it worth it? I mean, I've, I've talked so much of the show without Kristen here so far. I wonder if it might just be better to just pretend she's not on the show. Um, it, just ruins all, it just ruins all of our pyramids. Like, you know, like I cast 16 so that all these things can happen. All these stage pictures. Oh, I hate this. God, casting this is rough. I sent out a feeler for a lead singer. I asked him if he, you know, he wanted to do a work session with Vince and I, and I got back, hey, Eamon, thank you for considering me for this, exclamation point. Unfortunately, I'm incredibly behind on my own thesis at this moment, so I can't take on any more commitments. I've gotten this email back a million times. I do appreciate the offer, though, and would love to work with you in the future if you ever need a singer. In the future, I'm done here. This is it. This is the last chance. Hope the show goes well, and can't wait to see you then. Best, Casey. Thank you, Casey. That's the end of Casey. Okay, who's next?
one of the things Eamon is really struggling with right now is his vision is enormous and ambitious and exciting. And there is no way that we at the Lewis Center can spend a half a million dollars to give Eamon all the bells and whistles that he has dreamed up. Every amazing thing he's ever seen, he wants to include in this event. And it's simply not feasible. So one of, I think, Eamon's major challenges is going to be how he can realize this incredibly ambitious, wildly creative idea without yeah, going over budget. We, we cannot accommodate every request. There is a lot of contemporary stuff yeah. in the play. Like there's a lot of anachronism uh -huh. that makes me think that I keep going, wait, are we in Vietnam? I'm pretty sure we're in Vietnam, right? <laughs> and then, like, I'll hit something else and be like, wait, is it the 80s? You know, mm -hmm. so uh, what I would say is, if you're thinking about renaming yeah, yeah, them, yeah. you know, uh, look up common names. I did. I did, right? I did 50s names last night. What I, where I'm at right now is, like, Phoebe for Sheila. I don't know. That's, I looked up hippie names because I imagine that her mom was a little ahead of her time for the 50s. Okay. Um, yeah. So then I would look up like the hundred least common names in 1953. Okay, so that's a good Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They don't have to be the top hundred names. Yeah. But, but they have, you know, they have to exist. Plot and Sheila has to change. So I have to find some names, which is hard because they've been Claude and Sheila for, I don't know, a year now? And so it's gonna be, and so I'm still doing a lot of rewrites in the script and uh, it's like I'm working on a, a fourth draft right now. So this is the Matthews Acting Studio in 185 Nassau, the Lewis Center's building. And um, this is my favorite space on campus. I'm excited to, I don't know, really climb around, really come into a jungle gym, you know. But um, kind of keep it in this kind of um, shiny black, sexy, like, um, like still rock and roll world. And then like have the Vietnam come from that rather than go from the Vietnam world into the rock and roll world. And then uh, other cool aspects that we're looking to do is right in the center of the space, we're looking to have a, um, a fly system, so then it goes up and down. So that way we can connect other, when it comes down, it's easy to connect other aerial equipment to it. But also if you kind of run with it and it just lifts off, boom, then you're flying all around the space and you kind of have this full circular motion without having to like worry about the ground, you can just kind of float. There are some points that exist in this ceiling already for aerial, for aerial capabilities and aerial equipment. And what I would like, I don't know exactly where they are, but I would like to have definitely four points for ropes, like a one and a two and a three and a four, kind of like a square around that center point. Yeah. Boop, that's perfect. Yeah, I want to just try it low and even though you won't really go anywhere. So yeah, just, just feel it out, feel how you're gonna roll. One, two. So the Matthews is um, not compatible for aerial dance. That is, and um, we're gonna work through it. So, uh, it's a little late in the game, which is nerve-wracking, very nerve-wracking, but I kind of have to change the aerial vision. So the idea is we're gonna put these trusses in and they will make multiple points bear the weight of one point so we can actually get something to hang and swing and do gymnastic, aerial acrobatics on them, whatever we're calling it today. Right now that means reducing the show to three points. That's fine. I've, I've figured that out already. So it's Thursday, March 19th. I am one month away from tech. Well, one less day than a month away from tech. Yeah, I'm really excited. It's been going great so far. It's been really, really fun. I love being in the room. I love working with these guys. What I feel like has to give is um, it's really time for us to kind of become more than a group of dancers and actors in a room. It's time for us to take that next step. And I, I feel like we're on the verge of getting to that very cohesive place where we can be more than, you know, more than Princeton students, but a squad, an actual, you know, a squad of Marines. And so that's what this week is about. So it's spring break right now, which, uh, and, I, and I called the actors here and we have most of them. I think we need to kind of 
kind of one thing for me is like holding character. Like I have struggled with like keeping character up throughout a long period of time. So yeah. like being a soldier, like throughout the whole thing, you can't be like, oh, I'm a soldier, go off stage. Yeah. Like constant, like yeah, you can't like get into character. You have to be the character. Yeah, you have to like live it and figure out what it is. It's totally a journey. It's gonna take a while. I mean, like I understand, like this is gonna be like a process, and there's a process that we're you know that we kind of have to get some numbers up and running. But I guess now's the time where we can really, really let that be like. As we choreograph, let that character be in the forefront of the brain the whole time. Like yep. It is hard to just imagine. Like in a specific rehearsal, we're doing this one piece, but it comes right after something else. Yeah. <clears throat> and right before something else. Totally. Getting that together. I think just, again, what Clark was saying about with the acting character stuff, I think at least some of us aren't that familiar with that. <laughs> so that's the scariest part, the least comfortable part. These men were brought so low so that they could take command out on the field. Like they are, they have to be, um, you guys have to be changed, you know? It's a whole different thought structure. And so that's what we're gonna discover during this week. All right, we're gonna become different people. And when we come into these dances, we're not gonna be ourselves anymore. We're not gonna be people anymore. We're gonna be soldiers. It's a whole different way of thinking. So um, let's start with some warm up, and then we're gonna do some wrestling, okay? Let's go. So that's what this week is about. This week is going to be us wrestling each other. It's gonna be running these rehearsals less like, um, you know, like rushed dance rehearsals, as, which kind of just has to happen at the school because everyone's so busy. But um, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be, you know, digging into process and finding a way to actually, uh, you know, do some experimentation to figure out how these boys can emotionally connect to that idea more than just look great doing the choreography, because they look great. I'm doing something to better these recruits. I'm doing something to change their lives. So um, we found out that um, the set is like about like a hundred percent over budget. Like I was told to splice it in half, but massive changes have to be made, and we are one month till opening about like one month and two days. It's like the 23rd. I have no idea. No idea. Time is just... Time is flying. I just don't want to... I'm not going to be apologetic for having big vision. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to write the conclusion to my thesis because that is due tomorrow. About the full thing, the draft. Most unexpected thing to happen in rehearsal so far um, was uh, the other day, two days ago, my, my lead came into rehearsal and she told me that she had to drop the show. And she told me that she wasn't going to be able to do it. And this is, you know, about what, like a week and a half before tech, two and a half weeks before opening. I mean, there was just a moment of like, oh my God, this could, I could have to replace the lead, the lead of this show and teaching someone how to do aerial dance in two in two weeks. That could be that could be the play right now. I was scared of being the weak link in the show. I mean I was also terrified about getting schoolwork done. My junior paper was due the Monday before the show opened and that was really stressful. My advisor had asked me to start over. I turned in twenty pages and he was like, We need to we need to start over and I was like Okay, this, there's not that much time, but okay. Eamon kind of caught me in this moment where I was really scared academically. I was just terrified that I was gonna screw up the show and that I was gonna screw up the rest of my academics. I got in this moment of panic and I was like, I don't know what to do. Um, and so I just came into rehearsal like 10 minutes early and just cried. He was like, very calm. He was like, you know what, no. We're, it's a little, little past the point where that's, that's possible, so what are we gonna do to make this okay? And he worked with me to figure out a, a schedule that could get, um, that could let me get my academic work done. And he was so understanding. That was a little horrifying, but we, but we came back down from that ledge. But um, gosh, Prince is gonna be a stressful place. We soon can, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a tough school to go to. <laughs> What do you think is on the top priority right now? 
is, um, of my work to do is to make sure that these dancers are comfortable on this equipment. We just got it in two days ago. It, got, it, it all got up for the first time yesterday. It's, um, it's a huge new skill that takes a lot of work. And they have to get it show ready in two weeks. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's asking a lot. Especially when they have so much other stuff going on. With that in mind, I think it's totally doable. But what, I'm, what worries me is the stuff that I don't have control over right over. And that's, you know, that's like how the set's gonna move and how the set's gonna work. And when we get that stuff in, is it going to feed the choreography and the staging and the direction that we've already done so far? You know, is it, or are we gonna have to make massive changes? I'm down for massive changes. I just wanna make sure it's gonna work, you know? I'm not gonna be like, oh, we have to cut this, you know? Which I've heard before. And, um, you know, rather than, oh, let's figure out a creative solution around this problem so we can still make this moment happen. You know, it's kind of, it kind of, it kind of relies on how the show goes, like if it worked or not. Like, you know, did we get the war experience that these Vietnam War vets explained to me through this production? You know, I can't really, this thesis was supposed to be due on the 13th, which is, I guess, in a few days. But, um, honestly, I haven't been doing that much work on it for the last few days because I'm kind of, uh, waiting on this experience to unfold so I can bring that into the thesis itself. So uh, you can see Luke's head looks distinctly unmarinish. So we're gonna we're gonna give him a, a little bit of a crew cut. We want to make it look sexy though for Amon's show. But yeah, we're gonna get everybody in regulation. So that's what's going on here. Frank's a real marine, so he knows what he's doing. Not yet. Hopefully, but, he's gonna. Be. But my dad's a barber, so. What is that? What so there's those two things coming together. It's necessary. I don't I don't love it. I love my long hair, but that's fine. It's for art, you know. We've got so much hair. Dude, this is all coming off. Here we go. First of all, we're just going to get this all down to a more appropriate length, and then we're going to style it up. It's really short. <laughs> but uh, I'm into it. I'm always trying to try something new. That's what college is all about. <clears throat> Luke! I love it. Oh my god. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like, it's not like weird. I mean, it's like weird to see you, I guess. But it looks great. You <laughs> feel marine. Let's go. <laughs> That's Where the I'm point, ready. right? Ready for the show. The point's not for it. Luke to feel good. The point is for Luke to feel like he's in Vietnam. I just feel so, I just feel so good. I can't believe we're about to put this out and show this to Princeton campus. Like, this is gonna blow minds. And just the feedback that we've been getting from the people at the dress rehearsals has been really, really good too. So I, I just couldn't be happier. It takes dancers a long time to learn how to act and tell a story, but they get there. It takes, um, it takes dancers a long time to learn choreography and change it and get into the, the body of characters that they've never been bef uh, had before, and they get there, and it doesn't happen overnight. Right, one, two, seven, five. Win zero, one shot. One kill. Send it. The opportunities that the Lewis Center is giving me are just insane. I mean, no art is going to be as good as the art that's made by many minds that are experts in their field, who have amazing work under their belt, and some people that I would never be able to get in touch with without the university, and never be able to hear their ideas without this university connection. I'm just, I just know that this this is going to be beyond anything that I've ever done before.
guys, congratulations on your first dress rehearsal. That's Visually, it's super cool. Like we have two more, and then we open, and one of them's the day of our opening, so we want to be able to like be fine for that one and take it all easy. So um, let's start thinking: what exactly do we need to do, personally and as a group, to get this show to the Broadway quality that it needs to be on Saturday night? Trent, you're, um, you're on two. So um, uh, so five, six, seven, and eight, and one, two. Cool. Okay. Great. Um, so uh, everyone's on two. Uh, scene in front has to keep going and be more intense. It just, it's so, so I think slow. we did it. I think we yeah. came through and we, okay. um, we, did, we achieved that original goal, which was to do something so big and so awe-inspiring that you can't really wrap your head around it. I, I hope the audience comes in here and they can't quite think after it's done. And that's kind of the, what the best reactions I've gotten from the dress rehearsals have been. It's just, you know, people coming to me with their mouths open and just not saying words and then walking away. <laughs> like, that is the war. That is, um, it is, it's too big to judge and, um, and too intense for any one man. I think we've, we've created that intensity in the Matthews Acting Studio, which is really cool. Now everything's coming together. It just like feels so amazing. And We've just, all like, grown so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And to trust dancers right. as like, all around performers. Mm, right, and to trust us with a vision. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. so, I dance, yeah. I'm gonna talk on stage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy he yeah, yeah. with us. Like, like, if I had to share you. this with us, yeah. it means so much to him. <laughs> I was just really impressed by, all, number one, all the dancers are amazing and their techniques are beautiful and all that, but more impressively, like, I think their emotion and their acting has just really just blown me away. Just two young men in their physical prime lost the eternal twilight in the Vietnamese jungle, huddling together for warmth on a pitch black night, filling hours of silence with just the sound of each other's beating hearts. You handle this, Marines! Sir, yes, sir! Good. See you on the range tomorrow, bright and early. Yeah. Uh. It's, it is a big show. This is a full on real show. And I'm so impressed with the dancers, the singing, and, and how he was able to pull all this together. He is a professional and he's learned an awful lot, actually fighting, fighting hard to get what he wants so he can produce what he wants. And uh, it, it's, it's so impressive on different levels. Tony Walker, Brad in first class, RA9607. What I've learned about myself is that I can do this in the real world. I think I can make theater. And I think that I can make really big sensory stuff, even in places where people say no. And that I learned that if I keep up that conviction, that don't take no for an answer kind of attitude, then I'm going to get the quality that I want. And I think we've gotten the quality that I want. What's on the horizon right now is I want to get this show into the hands of professionals. I want them to see it. I want to hear feedback. I want to work on it. I want to get this show up. I think this show can't end right here and now. I think it has to keep going. 